Father, we thank you for the prayers that have been prayed, the songs that have been sung, opportunity to worship you in giving. And now as we look into your word, we ask that it will fall upon the good soil of our heart, that we will grow thereby. We thank you and we honor you for it all. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We are into our a new series, a new series which is called Daily Reminders. This is something that should resonate with all of us because all of us who have cell phones usually go into our calendar or our task and have our phone remind us of something. And if you go down a little bit further after you set it up, you see where it has the opportunity to repeat. And so you can set it up so that it lets you know every day about something, every week about something, every month about something, every year about something, but it reminds you, why do you want to be reminded? So that you do not forget. Because we can get very busy with life, and life can get very busy for us. And I want, with this series, this four-week series, I want to just Take this time of this time of the year where the summer is over and traveling and all that. Now we're starting to settle down. I want us to begin to look at our daily routines that impact our spiritual growth. And that we should cultivate these routines, these daily things that we do in order to help us grow. And as we develop these daily routines, it'll help us to grow spiritually. So with that being said, our first episode that we are going to jump in is called simply Daily Spiritual Habits. Daily Spiritual Habits. Under definitions, daily just simply means happening or being every day, done day by day, bestowed or enjoyed every day. Spiritual means to consist of spirit, not material, incorporeal, which means that it is in another region of life, the spiritual region. And then this one, habits. Habits is a disposition or condition of the mind or body acquired by custom or a frequent repetition of the same act. Now, I want to tell y'all that a habit is established whether you're trying to establish a habit or not. I want to say that again. A habit is established whether you are trying to establish a habit or not. It is just the way that you do things. And if we can become precise and we can become uh, focused on how we establish these habits, it can actually be beneficial to us. For those of us that have served in the military, we discover that every morning around about 6 o'clock, everybody had to come together in order to do physical training. Now, you didn't have to want to do physical training. This is what you had to do to stay in the military. And over time, you would realize that you built up an ability to do things because you have followed that habit. So let us look in Colossians, the third chapter, starting at the fifth verse, so that Paul can help us to get an understanding of why this is important to us. Colossians, the third chapter, starting at the fifth verse, through the thirteenth verse, in the English Standard Version, it says this. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry, on account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, 
But now you must put them away, put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander, and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices or habits, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave-free, but Christ is all and in all. Here it is. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also, so you also must forgive. Father, we ask you bless your word in Jesus' name. As we look at what Paul is bringing up to us, he is bringing up to us the fact that there are some things that we have, have a disposition, I have a way of doing, have a way of doing all that some of us know what our habits are. For instance, we get up in the morning, And then, oh, you know how y'all do in the morning, y'all just kind of sit there and don't say nothing. <laughs> then you say, well, I guess I got to get up. You get up, and then you walk slowly to the bathroom, you use the restroom, you go back, you lay down in the bed, oh. then you say, oh, I do need to get up. And so then you begin whatever your practice is, what, whatever things you do to get ready for the day. You have this process that you go through, this thing that you do every single day. Now, I didn't say every, at the same time every day, but it's the process that you go through every day in order to continue on. And in the like manner, we have a habit or a way that we shut down for the day. And again, it happens at different times, but the process is the same. And then you get to a point where you don't even think about it anymore. You just kind of, it becomes muscle memory and you just do it repeatedly every time. Some of that is because you know that you need to have things done. Some of it is because that is what was taught to you. It's, for instance, some people uh, don't wash their face until they brush their teeth. They brush their teeth, then they wash their face, and then they wash everything else. Some people do it the other way around. Some people make sure that they do their shower first. And you know, we have these ways of doing things, and when we don't do it that way, it makes us feel out of sorts for that day. For instance, some, some people, this is one that I, I read about that was kind of funny to me, some people make sure that they put on their socks before they put on their pants. And some people say, no, I put on my pants because I put my shirt on first, I put my pants on, I put my socks on, I put my shoes on. But it's that way that they do it. Why? Because there is a process that they have. So then it becomes a habit. And when somebody tries to help them and maybe hands them their pants, they say, no, I need my shirt. And you're looking at them like, what's wrong with you? But it has become this habit, this way of doing things. It, 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 we have conditioned our mind and our body because we have done the same thing over and over again. Some people, they'll sit there and they'll say good morning to everybody in the house. That's part of their habit. 
And then the day they don't say it, then everybody is wondering what's wrong because it has become this habit. I have two grandbabies that are in the marching band, and I know uh, because both of them play woodwinds that there's some squeaking that is going on in the house because they are practicing their instruments and causing squeaking as they are not properly blowing their instrument appropriately. I know they're going to pass that now, but that was just in my notes. So we have this way of doing things, and we know that as we practice things over and over again, what becomes is that we become good at it. And we want to ensure that we have not only physical good habits, the things that we have practiced over and over again, whether it's uh, working out every day so that we can make sure our body is healthy, eating right every day so that we can have this habit of health, doing different things, but there should also be a spiritual habit. A spiritual habit that we practice every day. Because we want to ensure that not only are we physically in good shape, but spiritually in good shape. That is why Paul was bringing out in, Corinth, uh, in Colossians the fact that the old things is the old way of doing things, and now there's a new way of doing things. Some of us still have some of the old things that are trying to come back, but if we start practicing the counter to the old thing, the new will then become the habit that we will walk in. And now we got to re also realize that we are creatures of habits. Our habits actually tell us what or show what we believe to other people. There are certain people that believe that uh, the natural look of our hair means that you don't do anything to your hair. You just let it naturally grow out and do what it is going to do. Now, from the looks that I just got from saying that, here in the sanctuary, and I know somebody online probably was shaking their heads also, that is not what natural means. But for some people, that's what natural means. And so what we want to do is we want to ensure that what we are showing folks is a habit or a lifestyle that is reflecting not only of how we are, but how God is flowing out of us. That the power of habits means that our daily habits must be shaped by the spiritual disciplines that will help to recalibrate or to refresh or to renew our hearts to the things that God desires. I'm talking about prayer, I'm talking about meditation, I'm talking about reading scripture, I'm talking about praise, I'm talking about those things that we know that God has said that we that are his people should be doing. And as they become a habit for us, it becomes the natural way for us to do things. It becomes the natural way for us to interact with other people. It becomes the way that people see us and see Christ in us. And because all of this trains us so that we live a life of godliness before people, and as we are living this life of godliness before people, it is actually causing God to be lifted up, and he says if he is lifted up, that he will draw all men unto him. We see Paul says this. He says that 
it's important every day for us to seek after God. It should become a part of our daily habit, how we seek after God, how we seek to put on those things. That he says that we are seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of its creator. He then goes on and says, what you need to put on as God's chosen one, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, mm. kindness, mm. humility, mm. meekness, patience, <laughs> bearing one another. And he goes on and he says, uh, if you got to complain against one another, that you forgive one another. And he says this because the Lord has forgiven you, so you should forgive one another. So if we could provide some illustration to this, he's saying take off the old shabby clothes of your old self and put on the new clothes that he has given you as a child of the king. That you will walk in the good clothes, the, the, the refined clothes, the finery of the Spirit of God instead of them old shabby clothes that you had before you came to Christ Jesus. Amen. We see that even in uh, Colossians, in the first chapter, the 11th verse, he had even prayed. That, he, that they would have a character that reflected God because this was a desire that he had for the Colossians to live this life so that they will be reflective of God in everything that they do and they say and how they conduct themselves. Jesus said that we will know, that they will know that you are the disciples of him by the love that you show one towards another. Now here it comes, and get ready to catch it. What routines do you do each and every day or even every week? What routine do you have? Do you do a date night every Friday? Do you uh, go to church on Sunday and then eat lunch together as a family and then go watch the football games? Do you wake up every morning and the first thing you do is make your coffee or check your emails or take a shower? What, what are the things that you do every day? I really want us to understand that whether we are intentional or unintentional, we are creating habits. And I would prefer that we be intentional about those routines. So if we are being intentional, that means we have to establish a process by which we are going to cause something to be a routine. How do we do that? By doing it over and 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 over. Why? Because it becomes a part of us. It becomes how we do business and then it becomes a part of how we conduct ourselves, which then impacts our character. It don't matter how much you say that you are a person of integrity, but if you don't practice being a person of integrity, you probably ain't going to have integrity. Because it requires some effort in you in order to be a person of integrity. So that impacts our character, it impacts our habits, and most of all, it impacts our walk with God. There are some people that do not believe that God can do things. Why? Because they have not built up in their spirit a confidence in what God can do. Y'all catch that one tomorrow morning. 
Because some people just lackadaisically do not trust God because they have not established a relationship through his word with God. They have not taken time throughout the day to speak with God. They have not taken time throughout the day to worship God. And because of this, when situations and times come and they're feeling the stressors of life, they ask God, where are you at? They ask God, why are you not here for me? They ask God these various things that show that their confidence is not in God, but in the situation that they're going through. If we understand that once we begin to build up these daily spiritual habits, that we will be able to overcome daily trials, daily tribulations, daily obstacles because we have confidence in him who loved us and gave himself for us. We establish a power within ourselves. We establish a confidence within ourselves. We establish a, uh, a, a, a push within ourselves that no matter what comes our way, I'm going to put my trust in God. And through that, I will be victorious. And through that situation, I will come out in a better place, in a better state. Why? Because we have built up this routine, this habit to trust him, to have confidence in him, to know because we have daily created the habit of being a part of what God has going on. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about being thankful, having gratitude. We're going to talk about meditating on scripture. We're going to talk about being a person of encouragement to those that we meet. That encouragement one to me is one that is really needed today because there are a lot of people that are not feeling that encouraged. There are a lot of people that are feeling that everything is down, but they just sometimes need somebody to come by and say, it's going to be all right. Trust in God that he has everything under control. That is probably, that's why we talk about texting the person that comes to your mind as a way of encouragement. We want to establish, to ensure, to make these habits, these conditions that we, can, uh, that we have acquired by frequent repetition of doing the same thing in our lives so that when things happen, we execute those things without even thinking. In the military, in the infantry in which I was in for a little bit of time, we had these things called battle drills. A battle drill meant that you did your part without command. Something happens, this is how you react. We as Christians need to have established some battle drills within ourselves so that when things happen, we know how to react. So when things happen, Instead of us jumping into the, uh, into the boat of despair and pain like everybody else, we're saying, God's got us. Let's not worry about it. Let's just deal with it. Because God wants us to react like that and not like everybody else. We should be a difference in every situation. We shouldn't be the main one ho hollering that everything is doomed and gloomed and despair. But we should be the one providing encouragement and saying that God has it all under control. Yeah. Even when people are telling you to shut up talking about God, you can still say that don't mean he don't have it under control just because you're telling me to shut up. Because we know that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask or think. And so as we are going through these next couple of weeks, these four weeks, 
three, three other weeks of this. I want you to look at your daily schedule, look at what you are doing, and seeing if you can say, I do this repeatedly, and not just when I think something bad is going to happen. You know, the best time to get prepared is not when the situation occurs. It's before the situation occurs. Amen? Amen. With that being said, I just want to remind those that are watching, those that are here, that part of the key to all this is you having a relationship with Jesus Christ. Knowing that he has given his life for you and knowing that he has provided you with a way in order to become a part of the family of God. The process is not a difficult process. In fact, it's a very easy process. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And it says, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one is confessed, one confesses and is saved. It even goes on to say that everyone that calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So with all that combined, what is this saved thing? It means to be rescued. It means to be delivered. What are we being rescued or delivered from? The penalty of sin. The penalty of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. It says in Romans 3.23 that we have all sinned and come short of God's glorious standard. And then in Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. None of us have done anything that makes us acceptable to receive the gift. All we have to do is accept. Can you imagine that? All you got to do is accept the gift. It it's not, doesn't have to be your birthday. It doesn't have to be any of that stuff. The fact is, is that it is something that you just say, I want. With that being said, I want you to understand that accepting what God has done for you does not isolate you. It makes you a part of the family. And that's why we say this is not an individual event. It's a team sport, which means that we all come together and help one another. We help each other to come together and to become better in Christ Jesus. And so with that being said, I want you to understand that we believe in this wholeheartedly. And if you have accepted Jesus today, you can contact us at our email, which is at info at GodsHouseCC.com, or you can text us at 864 920 -6 I'm sorry, 864-920-0100. When you have done that, it will come to us and we will respond back to you. Well, ladies, gentlemen, friends, and family, we thank you for hanging out with us today in our first episode of the series Daily Reminders. The subtopic today was daily spiritual habits. Look throughout your life this week, your day this week, and find out where your spiritual habits are. And if you look in that category and it's empty, begin to establish spiritual habits. And we'll talk about it more over the upcoming weeks, so definitely don't miss out over these next couple of weeks of how we discuss spiritual habits habits. Well, until next week, God's blessings be upon you in Jesus' name.